Many times within the popular culture, it is asserted that science has disproven the existence of God. But we at the Maja Center of Reason and Faith have produced an assortment of resources that prove this cannot be the case. First of all, disproving the existence of anything through empirical observation, which remember science is restricted to, is virtually impossible. And secondly, science is restricted to observational data within the universe, and therefore such data cannot be used to disprove or even prove an entity such as God that's outside or beyond that data source. Now, many within the world of the intelligentsia will agree with us on this issue. Science can't disprove God's existence. However, many still attempt to make an argument that may not claim to disprove God's existence, but at least to show that one would not need to posit a transcendent creator when trying to explain the universe. The case is often made that although God may exist, science can give a complete enough explanation about the universe without the need for God, or as some would say, science can know everything about everything. For example, the world-renowned physicist Dr. Stephen Hawking, in an interview on the Larry King Live show, which our founder and president, Father Robert Spitzer, participated in, stated, quote, God may exist, but science can explain the universe without the need for a creator, close quote. But is this the case? Can science give a complete explanation about the universe and know everything about everything to where one would not need to posit a transcendent creator like God in order to explain why the universe exists? I think the answer is no. As Father Robert Spitzer has so eloquently explained in the various products that we've produced here at the Maja Center of Reason and Faith, Science cannot give a complete explanation about the universe and know everything about everything that would negate the need for God precisely because science relies on the inductive method in order to validate its hypotheses. Let me explain. The inductive method starts with knowledge of particulars and then moves to general conclusions or universal principles. This is contrasted with the deductive method which starts out with the universal principle and then moves to knowledge about the particular. An example of the deductive method would be the following. A, all human beings are mortal, that's our universal principle. B, Sam is a human being, therefore C, Sam is mortal. Knowledge about the particular. Now the inductive method would be the reverse of this syllogism. We would start out with knowledge about the particular, so I observe Sam die and therefore conclude Sam is mortal. Secondly, I reason Sam is a human being. Thirdly, therefore, well then, all human beings must be mortal. Notice that with the inductive method, I started with observational data taken from the particular human being and then reasoned to a general conclusion about all human beings. But the question is, can I be absolutely certain that all human beings are mortal based on this method of acquiring knowledge? And the answer is no. First of all, I have yet to observe all human beings because there are more to come in the future. Secondly, there may be a human being in the past that I am simply unaware of and have not observed that may not be mortal. For example, I might not be aware of the prophet Elijah who was taken up into heaven without dying in 2 Kings chapter 2. Therefore, I must always be open to the possibility of discovering such a non-mortal human being that could alter my inductive conclusion that all human beings are mortal. And from this I must conclude that I could never be totally certain that my inductive conclusion is absolutely true because I can never be certain that I have observed every single human being that there is to be observed. I can only be certain about the human beings that I have observed. Similarly, because it relies on the inductive method in order to come to knowledge about reality, science can never be certain that its theory for explaining the universe is complete. And the reason for this is that the scientist can never be certain that he or she has discovered every single piece of data that's necessary for the complete explanation about the universe, much less a complete enough explanation that would negate the need for God. As Father Robert Spitzer likes to say, 
Science cannot know what it has not yet discovered because it has not yet discovered it. In other words, the scientist can only know or be certain about that which he or she has already discovered or observed. There may be a piece of data enshrouded in the past or beyond our event horizon that has not been discovered or observed and therefore cannot be taken into consideration for the theory. So notice how there necessarily exists within science a perpetual openness to discovering something new that could alter its current theory about the universe. And if science must always be open to discovering something new that could alter its current theories, well then science could never claim to give a complete explanation about the universe or know everything about everything, especially such a complete enough explanation that would negate the need for God as the creator. So in conclusion, because science must always be open to modification, Science can never give a complete explanation about the universe and thus know everything about everything. Therefore, the claim that science has disproven the need for God is unfounded.